You're tuning in to the Investors of Change with your hosts, Riz Fizz and The Big Lebowski. For more insights on content similar to this video, feel free to subscribe on YouTube or follow on Twitter. The views on this video are opinion shared and not investment advice. Remember to do your own due diligence. Hi, Adam. How is life treating you in Toronto? Hey, Jacob. Things are going pretty well. Uh, just having a pretty good morning here. We listened to the Good Food Earnings call yesterday, and we're both excited. So how are you doing in Denmark? Well, I'm good. Um, the only thing that's nagging me is uh, Denmark was playing in the soccer European championships and, and lost in the semis to, to England. But besides that, everything is good. Also excited about the Q3 conference call, but the, but the soccer match obviously still uh, nags the whole nation, basically. Yeah, that's too bad. I heard about that, and uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> I guess there's nothing. There's nothing uh, that can be done now, huh? Next no, time. exactly. But uh, but uh, fast forwarding to the to the Q3 conference call, that was uh, what a conference call uh, uh, that was. Were you, or earnings call? Were you excited about that, Adam? Yeah, really, really exciting quarter. Um, you know, we're also kind of coming out of COVID now, so I think that. Finally, we're going to be able to put some of that COVID company, you know, behind us and, and hopefully the future will be a lot brighter for, for good food. Cool. And yeah, you could say, I mean, both of us are, um, as, as, as our listeners and, and viewers have, have heard before, quite excited about food. And we could probably use, spend uh, the entire evening talking, uh, talking about, um, about this earnings call here on the Q3. But what we, you and I talked about was that for this earnings call, we both prepared individual notes and we agreed that what this is about this video is our free, each of our free key takeaways. And basically for, for the viewer to, to know, we did this blindly. So you know that down free of your points. I know that down free of mine points, key takeaways. And then we just list them here one for one and have a, and have a chat about that. Yeah, exactly. So um, I'm really excited to see what you came up with. I think that I have some good stuff in there as well. So it'll be uh, it'll be a good chat. Great, Adam. So let's jump right into it. And will you take us to your first point, your key takeaway from yesterday's Q3 earnings call? For sure. Um, so the first thing to note is that this was a record revenue quarter for, for good food. And uh, the quote was that strong basket size and frequency led to a recordly, record quarterly revenues of $107.8 million. And they had gross margins of 35%. And the CFO said, more customers bought bigger baskets more often. So that's exactly what you want to hear. You know, the company is still growing and the margins are actually still increasing even though they're putting all this investment into their uh their grocery uh line as well nice adam and um and going over to my key top point boom basically more or less the same so um i can only uh, fully support what you're saying about this being a top point i think what, what, what was exciting leading up to this quarter was uh, you and I also talked about this previously, that food announced in the beginning of June that the subscriber base, the active subscribers, that was looking to be a, a steady figure uh, compared to Q2. So our eyes were definitely uh, going into this Q3 earnings call on how would the revenue come in. And this was just super exciting to hear about that revenue expectations were were uh, were surpassed and and were driven by by these bigger basket size. Um, I also noted down that this was Jonathan Reuter, who, by the way, is the the new CF, CFO, who came in um, who came in at Food uh, a month or a month and a half ago, and he really made a my, my remark was also that he really made made a strong presence also yesterday at the earnings call. But otherwise, than that I got the exact same point as you. I can elaborate also with the point I have here in the quote where it says from COO Kagi that he was asked, actually this was on the Q&A session part of it, where he was asked regarding um, prices, because we're seeing uh, inflation coming in across different types of industries and also um, also in in food and in commodities like that. And, um, and what he commented on was that they had a really, uh, really good cost control 
on the food side, which basically also meant, means that they can, uh, they can meet the, the GP on 35%. Great. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's really that's really interesting. I mean, we've heard before that they can kind of buy seasonally and and kind of change uh, recipes and offerings based on um, prices. So that's you know one of the huge advantages of of meal kits. It'll be interesting to see, um, you know, when groceries end up being a larger part of revenues. Um, I I hope that margins will stay kind of around this range or even be able to increase slightly. That would be amazing. Um, a really cool note, <clears throat> because we mentioned that um, subscribers were down, although only slightly, I think that they were at around mm. uh, 2000 less subscribers than in the Q2. But the, the in Q2, the average rev revenue per subscriber was about $313 Canadian. And the gross margins were about 30.4% for the quarter. And in Q3, with a little bit fewer subscribers, the average revenue per subscriber was $340 with gross margins of about 35%. Mm. So a bit over a 10% uh, increase in, in revenue per subscriber and just over 10 to, 10 to 15% increase in gross margins. So still growing gross margins and still growing revenue per subscriber strong comment there adam yes you're absolutely correct with the like, like the increase in gross mar margin of five percentage points like you like you uh, like you mentioned it's 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 just really coming out strong here in q3 and um and, and a lot of eyes i think have been on the grocery part of good food and trying to see the first sort of signs of how is this business part or how is this part of the business shaping up? And, and this was a great insight into it. Definitely one of the first really true, great insights into it from a, from a reporting perspective. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's funny that we both came up with the exact same <laughs> quote. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited to see what you have next. Cool. And please go ahead with your second point. Sure. Yeah. And as we mentioned um, before, Good Food has been primarily like a meal kit company. That's how they started out. So this quote is talking about their uh, private label grocery. So they said that grocery items are only about 10% of sales with an expectation of grocery sales hitting 20% in the short term, fiscal 2022. Uh, well, that includes customer, uh, that'll, that includes allowing customers to order groceries without being a meal kit subscriber. Um, so something to know is that the fiscal year, you'll notice that it's um, July right now, and they're already in Q3. So mm -hmm. their fiscal 2022 year is actually going to start pretty shortly in, in the fall. And mm -hmm. uh, so we should hopefully Report. start to see some of those, uh, some higher grocery sales uh, in the, the coming quarters. Cool. And going over to my second point, which... Again, well, a little bit boring perhaps, but I got exactly the same uh, the same part as you got. Also, oh my as God. a second part. <laughs> That's amazing. So it full, fully uh, can support uh, what you're saying that this, I, I can't recall, I don't know if you recall if this was something they presented or if this was a part of an analyst question in the Q&A session. I think it was in the, in the Q&A session perhaps. Um, yeah. What was interesting to see, I think, this was also a Q&A session where, I don't know how you experienced, but I think the analysts were really keen on knowing more about the grocery part. Like on the previous uh, earning calls, they were, they were more focused about other parts of the business. And this one, I think we really saw a lot of analysts uh, digging into how is the grocery part developing. And, um, and this figure is, is definitely something that's, that's really interesting that the... Um, that they shared and uh, and and is also showing the, the growth uh, in this area. What is of course has to be kept in mind is that the business at the 10% uh, range, I think they also commented on that, uh, has been 10% for a longer time period. But in that time period, like during uh, fiscal uh, 2021, but in that time period, they have also been growing the business overall. So meaning that the grocery part in absolute terms has has of course also been growing but the meal kit part has been growing um, equivalently. And this is what the, and this is the shift they expect to, to start happening during fiscal 2022, uh, like you exactly mentioned. 
Yeah, and if I can talk a little bit to kind of the inflection point that they're talking about. Uh, 15 months ago, Good Food actually had zero gro grocery SKUs. And today they have about 1,000 product offerings that, that they offer. And Jonathan Ferrari has talked a lot about an inflection point, which will happen between 1,500 and 2,500 SKUs. And that's where um, your average grocery shopper will be able to do their full grocery shop just from the assortment offered at Good Food. And I think that that's going to be a big part of what pushes that um, grocery spend up from, from 10 to 20% when people don't need to go elsewhere and they can do their full shopping at, at Good Food. That's a, that's a very good point, Adam. Um, mm -hmm. Also, there were some to, to just round this off uh, about the grocery part and, and, and how that is developing. There were some good questions from analysts regarding the promotion, which you and I also talked about earlier, the January promo, where they did the, um, where they were trying to establish the grocery part business and launch it more uh, aggressively. And they had a 15% promotion on all on the groceries. Um, and, and there were questions about that. And it was quite interesting also the data that, that the management team shared on that point regarding the, the stickiness of the customers. They actually got in there. And I think one of the members of the management team, I think it was the CFO mentioned that, the, that they're seeing churn at an all-time low which is also just fantastic to hear. I think also that's that's also something very positive to take away from this earning call as well is the behavior of the customers, which we also touched upon in, in both our first points. Yeah, I think it was the January 2020 promotion and it kind of happened at a weird time because they sent out promotional material and then we ended up going into a lockdown, which really put some strain on their distribution mm. uh, and warehouses, but they decided to go through with it it was actually 50% off. And that was my first time actually trying their, their, their private label grocery items. And about a month later, they launched Good Food Wow in Toronto, uh, which I became a member of right away. Great, super. And just to uh, just to correct, you said 2020, but you meant 2021, right? January 2021. <laughs> yes, sorry. Yeah, the yeah, whole no. last year has <laughs> Time been, flies, has been yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Adam, um, perfect. So, so again, um, blind without sharing uh, sharing notes beforehand we we basically hit the first two two points i think our eyes were both uh, targeted in on uh, on especially these uh, these areas of the business should we go on to your third point sure yeah it's i mean it's looking good or not looking good here depending on uh <laughs> here you ask we're, we're we're thinking very alike and Completely i think biased. That, yeah yeah that i think that proves that like these are probably the important things um about this company's success long term and these are a lot of the questions that they're getting in, in the Q&A. So these are the things to really monitor with this company. Um, meal kits are great, but you really want the private label grocery to take off if, if for long-term success in order to reach a, a much larger customer base. That's a very good point, Adam, for the listener to, to take away from there. And I think we have been discussing behind uh, videos, you and I, and together with other people that are following food, uh, as well as um, fund managers and and retail investors like ourselves and other other alike. And a lot of focus has been on why is it that HelloFresh Group, for instance, both in Canada and outside of Canada, are performing so well uh, and executing so well and being very aggressive on promotion. I think it it has to be noted that Good Food actually in 2021, um, especially has been more focused about building the business behind the scenes and not so much pushing the market, um, have of course been benefiting from, from the lockdowns that's, that's been in, in, in across Canada and, um, and, and the adaption of online groceries and, and meal kits, but have not really been, been taking, like harvesting the, the very last things of the field uh, uh, in regards to marketing efforts and uh, and, and going aggressively for, for bigger net sales, but more building the business. And, uh, and that is also what, uh, what we're seeing here with, uh, as, a, as, as a result presented on, on, the, on the earnings call. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I went off topic again, but this is all really exciting. So yeah, Jacob yeah, and definitely. I love talking no, about it and we could probably talk about it all day, as we said. Yeah, <laughs> great. And let's move on to your third point. Will you go ahead with that? Sure. So yeah, this is talking about CapEx and um, the company plans on spending about $20 million in CapEx for 2021. Of course, this is already Q3. So 2021, uh, fiscal 2021 
fiscal 2021, sorry, is, is coming to a close shortly in, in a few months now. And the guidance was originally to spend 20 to 30 million uh, to increase their same day delivery footprint and increase automation. Um, so they're kind of on the low end of that uh, spend. However, there were some delays in construction and stuff just due to the lockdowns that we've had in Ontario and Quebec. And their tech team has grown from 15 people to 75 people in two years. So they're seeing a lot of internal growth in the, in, in the size of their team, which is really exciting. And they've said that 2022 CapEx will be significantly higher which is great to hear because they're going to be expanding the, that I, to me, that means that they're really going to expand their private label and their same day uh, delivery distribution. And they have about $157 million uh, in cash to do that. So quite a nice pile of cash sitting on the side. Cool, Adam. Adam, when I'm seeing this point, and this is an awesome point you have here, uh, which is a little bit different from, from the first two points you had, could you elaborate a little bit on, there were also some questions trying to, it's, it's really Kogi's area in regards to the rollout of the new fulfillment centers and the offering across different cities. Did I get it? Did I get it correct that they talk about uh, what will be beginning of fiscal 2022, meaning late calendar year 2021, where they're going to roll out a good food? Wow, if I got it correctly, in Vancouver, Calgary, and Ottawa City. Did you get that point? Yeah. The, um... I'm not sure about Calgary because in the presentation, they actually list um, Quebec City, Ottawa, and Vancouver. Um, so those might be the next three cities that they're okay, targeting. Okay, that was how it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but they have mentioned Calgary before in the last uh, earnings report for Q2. So that is probably going to follow uh, pretty soon after, I think. That is uh, that is awesome, Adam. And this is definitely also something for for the viewer to take away from here. It's uh, it's the investment side of food, how they are growing the business. There there was a little bit more covered on this earnings call, both from the management presentation, like like you're also taking this this, this from, and um, and also in the Q and A session from the analyst. The analyst will also seem really interested. I think one closing remark from my side when I see your comment regarding the cash. I don't know if you noticed the very very last question from an analyst in the Q and A session. Which which uh, which was about uh, the current stock price and the cash at hand, where he actually asked about how management views um, a potential uh, stock buyback, and and this was I think uh, just such an off cue uh, question we haven't heard before because this is a company that's growing, it's developing, it's uh, close to EBITDA profitable or in some quarters is unadjusted EBITDA. And then they're also talking, and suddenly it opens for questions uh, of this character because they're seeing this cash at hand and what would be best for, for, from, uh, from an investor perspective. I just think it's, uh, it's amazing to hear that, that the business uh, is at a position today where they can, they can seize new opportunities, they can develop, they can grow, they can even talk about uh, things like stock potential stock buyback. And, and Ferrari's comments also was this, I don't know if you noted that, was was also superb to to take away where he talked about the 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 gap in market cap from good food up to hello fresh group and from hello fresh group up to other food delivery uh, services and so on and quick commerce uh, businesses did, did you did you notice that um, that part towards the very end yeah so the, he was asked about a buyback and um they, what they didn't directly say that they they were interested in a buyback right now but ferrari said that they're focused on investing on distribution, automation, and SKU assortment at the time being, but they're always looking at ways to, you know, benefit the, the shareholder. Mm, I think exciting. pretty much saying like, hey, we're not at a stock buyback uh, stage yet. We are looking to really expand and land and expand pretty much, get into new markets and <clears throat> really build up our offerings. Um, they're going to have their Ottawa and Montreal, new, new Montreal facility ready in the first half of fiscal 22. And they also have a Toronto um, facility, which they said they have no major update on, but that was the facility that was uh, facing some construction delays in, in uh, 2021. Good update there, Adam, and and great of you to bring up this point around the CAPEX, which also uh, tells a story about the business. And so here we differed a little bit on the third point, but I have this point about the, 
about the brands and the assortments, some of it you actually quite interesting touched upon on your second point. So that is more or less one to one. What I will elaborate on there is the inclusion of national brands. Um, we talked about it a little bit before. Was, this was mentioned briefly on the Q and A session as well on the Q two earnings call. And in this part, uh, Ferrari, I think it was elaborated on this, saying that they, they are looking to add national brands for the first time into the assortment, which will not be branded good food uh, to, the, to the end consumer, but will be branded with the respective national brand. How do you feel about that uh, strategy and that tactic? Obviously, this is not something that's going to be, I don't know why I'm saying obviously, but it seems it's not going to be something that's going to be the backbone of the assortment because good food is really about growing own pr- branded products and creating the brand and feeling and emotions around uh, packaging and storytelling and quality and, and, and having that ownership of the, of the process. And then, and they really enhance, um, emphasize that throughout, throughout the recent years, but adding some, a few national brands to the, to the assortment and also local brands to meet local, uh, local needs. How do you view that both as a consumer and, uh, and as somebody that's looking at, at food for, as a business case? Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see. I th- I think, I mean, we haven't seen any branded national brands uh, yet on good food. And I know that their focus is private label. So I don't think that it would ever be like 50-50. But um, mm. it's it's just something curious because I, I, I really like that it was private label and they have full control over the supply chain. I was really excited when they said that they were going to start shipping things like um, local coffee beans in Toronto, because that's, that's actually the way that I get my coffee beans right now. <laughs> I have my local shop. So I was like, well, if I can order that from good food, that saves me an extra trip. Um, and I have tried the good food coffee beans before, and they're actually pretty, pretty good, but I do love to support my, my local coffee roaster as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's really curious. I, th- I think that a big thing to note is that they said that they used to do all of the reaching out to um, mm. producers and, and brands to, to get some new products for their private label offering. But now it's really shifted and, and hundreds or thousands of, of producers are reaching out to them. So if you're on the private label grocery business, you're probably super, super busy and uh, the, the products that they've been launching um, have been really great. The branding has been um, very thoughtful and they're launching a lot of products. I think that I posted, we have a little chat group and I think that I posted that they launched like 50 or 60 new products a couple of weeks ago, all, all at once. So they're, they're coming out in pretty big groups and I think they're going to hit that 1500 uh, skew number pretty quickly sooner sooner than people expect that's a that's a really good remark there and uh, you mentioned it also on your second point but this inflection point that ferrari talks about which is which is great to to understand that they mentioned that as a key uh, point they will pass at one point so meaning that 4000 sku sounds great but they are really focused around the first 1500 to two and a half thousand like you also mentioned because that is where the shopping basket can be more or less complete. Um, and I think I also saw, and this is just a detail, but uh, but this time Ferrari mentioned and, and used a little bit of energy on specifying that the 4,000 SKUs will be unique across, you could say, Canada in the sense that it can be that the 4,000 SKUs, let's say the last 400 or 600, 800 of those will be unique for a regional area, and then they can differ those in other regional area, depending on needs. And I again think just this pays back into that if you're buying into the whole grocery uh, vision and strategy of good food, this is just fantastic to see how they how they actually are so assortment focused that they go into de- these details about um, about making regional differences compared on on consumer needs. Yeah, they know this like really early on in their journey, right? Like they're nowhere near their 4,000 yet. They already know, oh, we're going to have regional yeah. specific SKUs. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. And then complete, like you said, about the, the shift in power that that probably getting, you know, the first, like you just mentioned, the first uh, SKU in, um, everybody will, uh, still wanted to, to see what food w- was about if you were a producer or a, uh, or a manufacturer in the, in the food category. 
and now that the the balance has shifted that's also amazing it must put them in a great great place to uh, to build on top both with uh, national brands a few selected national brands and also the ongoing development of their own branded products right for sure and also um we talked about um the the 10 percent of their revenues only being from grocery right now well good food wow is only in two cities so as they as they get this spend this capex um and as they have more SKUs, they're going to be offering good food wow in, in more regions and that's also going to help push that that revenue from groceries up as well yeah adam actually regarding good food wow could you elaborate a little bit on the the small difference there is there in when they talked about opening up if if uh, on good food wow and not having that tied up to a subscription could you elaborate on that and clarify what what was meant by this point yeah it's hard for me to actually know because i've always been a good food meal kit subscriber so i i wasn't actually really aware that you had to be a meal kit subscriber in order to sign up for wow i don't know if that's still the case or not in toronto um However, if they were to open it up and, you know, you don't need to be a, a meal kit subscriber in order to get it, um, they, they did say that, like, there, there is a, a customer base where for some reason or another, uh, meal kits just don't work for them. So that allows them to reach just, you know, that many new customers. And they also made a pricing change to Good Food Wow. It used to be like a, a $9.99 a month subscription. Um, you get free delivery on all of your uh, orders. And I think it was $25 or more. Um, they had been testing out some like shipping, uh, you know, like minimum order um, structures recently, but they just announced that it's now going to be $5.99 a month. So $4 cheaper and there's no minimum order anymore. So if you want to just order, you know, a couple of items, I guess they're. I guess that's gonna be okay, and you just pay like a small service fee. Uh, I checked it out, and I had like a an eight dollar order, and I think my service fee was like nine cents. Mm. Um, and then I and then I tried making like a ninety dollar order, and my my service fee was about a dollar seventy. So mm. yeah, seems to be you know that's that's like a that's a pretty competitive offering compared to what's out there today in uh, just... online grocery. It's amazing. I think if you ask me from the context I know, which is the Danish one, I think the 995 was already a steal for what you were getting. And this just seems to come from really a position of strength. Um, so this is just so cool that they are so consumer focused on this. And still, they must really be confident when looking into the future on how to keep um, gross profit and, and make the business profitable they can see that there are so many economies of scale still just around the corner that they they feel confident in lowering these these fees are just yeah um, just just delicious to hear from a from an investment point of view i think yeah definitely it's uh i mean well <laughs> this is going to be a really exciting story i think i keep saying to, to watch and this is so this is really early like it's mm. some you know you can tell that you you mentioned kind of that they're doing kind of less promotions um and really building out their offering this is an opportunity that's almost like a company that would normally be private i think that's a good uh, that's a good case you're making because you you're you're basically also saying that you as an investor you're you're jumping on on the journey quite early aren't you uh, yeah i think because the company we, being public at this stage yeah if you, if we look at insider ownership um which we we do from time to time i think that now about um 20 let me see i think 26 percent, 27 percent is insider owned and 57 percent is owned by the general public so institutions and vc firms together only make up about 17 percent of the company mm. so it's it's still really early the story and and uh Definitely one that has years of growth ahead of it. 
Excellent, Adam. And I think that those remarks are a really good place to uh, to close up this um, finish up this this earnings call presentation. We will definitely monitor it. Uh, there's no doubt, doubt about it. The, the company going uh, going forward. And if uh, you uh, if you wish to check out other of our videos, uh, also food related, you can see other parts of the business and and see how Adam and I go into depth with with good food and and online groceries. Feel free to to check out the the. The remaining content on on our channel or follow us on on twitter and to you Adam, i would uh, thanks a lot for 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 your points it's really always uh, always exciting to to chat with you about food and and uh, and to see your perspective uh, on the business same here as always jacob thanks you too take care bye bye